My name is Steve Lane. I am the leader of a local group called Quiet Corner Refugee Resettlement, QCRR. We are a community co-sponsor group of IRIS from New Haven. IRIS is a, uh, their acronym is Integrated Refugee and Immigrant Services. They are a organization that locates refugees, settles the refugees in the state of Connecticut. We are a smaller group that does it right here in the Willimantic area. My connections to Eastern are my wife, Julie, who is an undergrad and a grad from Eastern, and my son, who was a grad, undergrad from, from Eastern. We, on average, settle a, a family a year uh, in good times when the administration is, is in the process of setting, settling refugees. Previously, we settled three refugee families from Syria, and in January, we settled a, a refugee family from Afghanistan that is now living in Willimantic. So the goal is for the family to be independent at year one. It's going to take a little longer for this family because there's some obstacles that we're helping them with, language being the main obstacle. There's very few Pashto speakers in the area, but they're learning English. And we will move on and, and make ourselves ready for another family when we feel like we've, we've served this family as best we can. The Ukraine refugees that are coming into the United States are coming in as humanitarian parolees. And the designation of humanitarian parolee is that you're here for a set duration of time. That being the case, they do not come in up front with any government services that are available. So a group or an individual that would settle a family of Ukrainians does it totally out of their own pocket. So there's no, there's no food supplemental programs, there's no DSS services that are available. So it's a very expensive process. Our small group would uh, eat up most of our funds, if not more, to do that. So we're not, we're not rushing to do that until there, there's, there's some more support services available. If you can imagine, no medical aid whatsoever, no uh, housing aid whatsoever. Uh, it's a very expensive process. It's being done, but not by our group. This family will probably be in the range of fifteen to twenty thousand dollars for the first year, and a lot of that is uh, translation services that we that we now pay translators for. Early on, it was some rent supplements, but they are now paying their own rent. The dad's fully employed in the area, and they do get some government services as well. Are you talking about the Afghanistan family? The Afghanistan. But the Ukrainians would cost much more. Ukrainians, it's estimated that it, that it would be $30,000 a year for a Ukrainian family that would help with housing and, and medical. Um, and it's a two-year commitment. I'm not sure, sure there's any connection between anybody thinking the war is going to be over and occupied land will, will go back to Ukraine and the process. It's, it's a category that's established for uh, people that they don't maybe know to put in any other category. Um, currently, they're humanitarian parolees. The Afghans came in as the same, same category. It was such a rushed process, and the infrastructure was dismantled by the previous administration. And I personally, I think this administration was caught off guard and not prepared for it. So the easy designation is humanitarian parolee. They, they are then able to apply for, for uh, asylum or citizenship. Our family will be able to apply for SIV status, which is special immigrant visa, because the dad was an assist for the American military in Afghanistan. But all that paperwork still is being processed. We are looking for more volunteers. We're, we're looking for ESL volunteers, English uh, teachers, uh, not trained teachers, but folks that will go into the house and work with English with our family. We have a team of volunteers that, that do that now, but we're always in need of more people. We're looking for drivers, people that are available to drive. Um, yeah, so we, we, never, we never say no if we can fit somebody into our network, for sure. How can you find us? That's a good question. Um, QCR, QCRR411 at gmail.com. 
We also have a Facebook presence, QCRR Facebook presence. So that would probably be both, uh, both usable ways. Piece of advice. Uh, patience, certainly uh, peak, speaking personally, I want things to happen faster than, than is possible. I want people to learn English faster than is reasonable. And what helps for myself is when I put myself in the opposite situation, how fast would I be learning Pashto? Probably not nearly as fast as our family is, is learning English. And, and the realization that our families are survivors. They've come through uh, circumstances that are just immeasurable in, in my mind, and yet here they are. And, and it is our charge to make them feel welcome and to help them enculturate into their new life. So patience is certainly probably the number one.